Yeah, I mean, it's always the hard part of, of our business is, you know, that things like this happen. And so, you know, I was fortunate to play with him for a long time. I have tons of, of great memories from his time uh, here. Um, I've said it before, you know, he probably has impacted my career as significantly as anybody that I've ever played with. And so I love him and I wish him the best, you know, moving forward. I know he wanted to, to move on and, you know, I, I hope he has a lot of success in Tennessee because he's a good friend. But um, at the same time, you know, part, part of the deal is uh, that you got to keep moving forward and, and you got to, you know, work with the guys that are here. And so I'm excited about that challenge as well. And, uh, you know, what's it feel like for you? It's a little, little different feel, it seems like, from, you know, the sidelines from us. What's the uh, camp like? Let's far three days in. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, obviously, you know, anytime, anytime you have change, things are different. And, uh, you know, the field, the practice schedule, the routine, you know, is, is different than, you know, what guys who have been here have been accustomed to. Uh, but for me, that, that part of it's always exciting. You know, it's fresh, it's new, and uh, it's a challenge. And so, you know, you wake up every morning trying to, you know, come out with the best energy you can and, and uh, try and improve daily. And, um, you know, I think guys have, have done a pretty good job of that the first couple of days. The last one for me, the, um, the lap. The order I led to the offense, uh, taking the lap. And I've seen a lot of stuff out here, uh, even getting a kick sometime, but I haven't seen the unit take a lap here. <laughs> we screwed up, man. <laughs> uh, all 11 of us. So uh, Art was not pleased with that and sent us on our way. Uh, but hopefully it's something we learn from and it doesn't happen again. Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do it. What's the speed training Marcus has you working on? He said he wants to be quicker. What, what's, what's that look like? I mean, that's just getting in, you know, with our guys and, in, in, you know, in the weight room and, you know, constantly trying to improve and get faster. And so, you know, I'm trying. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. <laughs> This defense, it, this may be too soon to tell this, but are you seeing them click a little bit with the EP's scheme? Is it something where they're disguising things a little bit better think, than maybe they did last year? Yeah, I think they're doing a good job. I mean, obviously, you know, it's really, really early in camp. And so, you know, I think as things go in and guys are installing, there's a lot of learning, you know, that's going on and, you know, trying to, um, you know, pick up the details of, of the defense. But for the most part, guys have done a good job. Um, you know, and I think their, their mindset and energy and practice has been really good. And so we just need to keep with that. But I think they're doing a good job so far. Michael? So when's the last time you actually ran a lap? Uh, <laughs> during OTAs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screwed up during OTAs. So it hasn't been that long. And with the speech and things, do you actually think you can get faster? Uh, and, you know, in your mid-30s, uh, that would be pretty revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, th I, geez, I think, you know, I think you can always improve. And so, you know, you're constantly training to get your body in the best physical shape you can get it, you know, making sure that, that your weight and your body composition is where you want it. I think those are things that you can control, you know, with hard work and, and effort um, and discipline. So, you know, I think you constantly work on that stuff. And honestly, I feel as good as I ever have when I'm out on the field. Uh, I feel as athletic and, you know, as well-conditioned as I've ever been. And so I feel really good. And one more thing when it comes to Julio. When did you find out that Julio was going to not be with you anymore? Does he call you? Does someone from the front office call you? Like, how does that go? Uh, kind of like everybody else, you never know with these things. Even when guys, you know, sometimes, you know, want to move on, circumstances, you know, change and, and they're not able to. So you never really know. Um, I think private conversations that I have with Julio and, you know, with our front office will remain that way. But you, you're never, you know, 100% certain how things are going to shake out. And, you know, in this league, I've, I've found that, you know, going through the past 13 seasons, um, you know, to make assumptions on what's going to happen, you know, is, is a waste of time. So I just waited, you know, trained myself as, as best I could to get ready for this season. And then. You know, when I found out the trade was going through, it was basically, you know, a few hours before it became, you know, public knowledge. Yeah, hey, Pat. Um, I remember asking Brett Favre this later in his career when he was the last man standing with the Packers. 
Packers to be after me. You know, there was just nobody left from the original team to get started with. What's it like for you? There's only four of you guys left who were starters on the Super Bowl team. But you trust us a little bit quickly, but what's it like to sort of be, you know, looking around and there's not a bunch of guys left? Not a lot of guys left from 2008. Uh, one of them's here, you know, he's asking questions now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's part of it. I think that, um, you know, you talk about from the team that, you know, went to the Super Bowl, I mean, there's only a handful of guys. I think you said four maybe left on the team. I think of Jake, Grady, uh, Dion. So, um, you know, that's the nature of this league. Uh, Rosters turn over quickly, and it's about getting the guys that you come in with during the offseason and uh, work with during training camp to come together as quickly as possible. That's probably a little bit more, uh, it's a, a little bit different than early in my career. You know, you had teams that probably stayed together maybe a little bit longer than now. I think the, the turnover is more now, but um, that's the nature of the league. So you got to come, you know, come together as fast as you can. For me, I feel fortunate, you know. To, to go through these changes, to have been around long enough to, to go through some of these changes. And, you know, I take pride in the fact that I've been able to play at a level that allows me to do that. What's it like to have a card around? Because you guys have such great work together in the race relations and helping other privileged kids in high school. What's, what's that like? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, um, yeah, that's part of it. You know, that, that's, that's part of the difficult part of, of this business is that not only do you lose professional players, guys that help you on the field, but also friends and, and guys that, uh, have supported initiatives that you've done personally uh, and you've supported initiatives that that they've done and So those things never really stop, you know, you try and keep in touch with guys and, and help out along the way as much as you can uh, You know, that's that's the fun part is that these relationships last, you know, a lifetime of playing together for a short amount of time um, You know, but it is part of it. You, you have to move on you have to, you know, keep moving forward Hey Matt, uh, you've played in a lot of different offenses uh, since you've been here, uh, but what excites you the most about this current new offense that you're playing in now that you've had three days of tr official training camp, you know, you had OTAs, but uh, what's the most exciting part for you? Uh, you know, I think it's a challenge of getting better. We've got so many young guys uh, that, that are, are, are new, number one, to this organization, but also new to the league. And so you want them to, you know, develop you know, day in and day out. And it's cool to see as an older player how much development can take place with these younger players from day to day and the, and the daily improvement that you see. And so, you know, I, I try and focus on that myself, trying to improve every day. But I, I sometimes think you see bigger jumps in these younger guys. And to me, that's one of the, the most exciting thing, you know, about being part of not only the offense, but this team. Because I think there are a lot of young players on this team that uh, can develop quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's been three days of camp, but, you know, we had some time during the OTAs, some work all throughout the summer. Uh, you know, you can tell he's coming in really good shape. Uh, I think he's done, you know, he's done a nice job from the moment he got here. And it's been a slow, sledi, uh, you know, steady uh, progression. And that's what we need to continue from him. You know, just keep getting a little bit better every day and um, focusing on, you know, improvement. Um, He's definitely got the right mindset to do it. You know, keep things simple. Focus on, you know, getting good lifts in, making sure you're good during the walkthroughs, being solid during practice. Uh, because the physical skill set is there. You know, that, that's going to show up, no question about it, because he, he's, you know, talented. But the difference is going to be, you know, getting the details down. And I think he's done a good job with that so far. Well, I think everybody's different. You know, there's 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 no getting around that. And so, you know, I think his style is, you know, he's going to be very upfront, very honest, loud, and uh, and let you know what he expects from you. And I think guys have bought into that. Um, he's clear, you know, about what he expects from you, uh, whether that be in meetings, whether it be on the field. Um, and he'll remind you sometimes of what he expects you, you know, expects from you while you're, you know, on the field. And, you know, I, I, I like that. I respect that. And I think guys have bought into that too. Uh, but he's genuine, you know, and I, I think that's the biggest thing. Every coach that I've been around, if they're true to themselves, you buy into what they're, 
uh, all about, and that's certainly the case with uh, Arthur Smith. You said this is the best thing you've ever felt. What's kind of gone into that making it different for you? I don't think so. I think just, you know, in the last probably four or five years, I've figured out, you know, what works for me uh, in terms of training, you know, when to push, when to recover. Uh, I feel a lot more comfortable, you know, with, with that, you know, part of my life than I probably did, you know, at 23 or 24. I think you're, you're really, you know, still figuring things out then. And so I feel like I have a good routine, you know, uh, a, a good balance of, you know, working hard, getting rest, recovering, and knowing when to push. And uh, so I always feel like I come in, you know, in good shape. And, you know, this year is no different. I always feel like I have to have the mindset, like, I'm in the best physical space, mental space I can be. And I feel like I did a really good job this offseason to put myself there. Hey, so Thursday, Grady talked about the fact that, you know, he's the pro bowler, seven years in, but he's not taking anything for granted on how he approaches things. He's acting like the DMP, hey, I'm starting from scratch and I want to prove myself. From your perspective, you know, from, from that perspective, how do you approach it just in terms of 14 years in MVP, but proving something to Dave or going, proving something to Arthur Smith? Proving something to everyone, you know, myself included, every day. Uh, you know, I, I I think that speaks to why Grady is the way he is and the type of player is, you know, that that he is. And you know, he takes nothing for granted. He works hard as anybody. He works as hard as anybody I've been around in my career every day. And he is as consistent uh, of a teammate as anybody I've been around in my career. And um, you know, there, there's no shortcut or substitute to to being successful. And that's why Grady's had, you know, such great success. But I feel the same way. I really do. I think, you know, we talk about it all the time. The, the lockers that we have, they're not owned, they're rented. And, you know, you've got to pay rent every day. You've got to go out there. You've got to put in the work and, and make sure that they're not putting a different nameplate on top of it. And so I always feel like that. You know, every time I step onto the field, I've got something to prove, you know, to myself, to the organization that, you know, they're making the right decision and having me here. And when you walked over after the practice, fans just roared. So how is it for you just to have fans back here for training camp? Man, it feels good. You know, uh, it's been quiet out here, you know, at practice, not even having you guys around. It feels good to have, you know, everybody back. Yeah. Well, today at least. We'll see how that goes in the future. But uh, no, it does. It feels, it feels good to kind of get back to some sense of, of normalcy and hopefully, you know, people can stay safe and keep moving in that direction. But to have fans out of practice today, you know, it brings up the energy. There's no getting around it. We played all year last year, or most of the year, uh, without fans in the stands. And I thought the play was very good, but you do feed off of it, and you miss it. And, uh, you know, certainly appreciate having them back today. Sure. Allison, last one. Yeah, so speaking of Grady, I asked him the personal goal. I know there's always a team goal. But for you, would you set a personal goal this early? Like, he was double-digit sacks. This is something he's never done. What, what are you trying to do? Win. <laughs> I'm at the point, you know, for me, it's it's about winning games. And so whatever they're asking me to do, whatever, you know, role I can play uh, within our offense to give us the best chance to win, well, honestly, that's that's really all I care about. And so, um, you know, commit myself to, to doing whatever it takes to, to help our team win. Dwayne, you have one last one? Yeah, real quick. Does Calvin seem like more, not saying he wasn't a leader, but you sense that he's kind of feeling like maybe he needs to be the leader, the voice in that receiver group. I think so. You know, I think he's he's entering a spot in his career where he's definitely more comfortable. Um, he's always been a good leader by the way he works, you know, by the way he prepares, you know, and guys notice that. You know, you don't always have to be the guy talking all the time or giving speeches and stuff like that. You know, quite honestly, I think it's more important to, to show, you know, what leadership or, you know, what you're all about. And he does that and, and works really hard. But I think from a, you know, from a, from a standpoint of being the most veteran guy in that room, you know, really with the most experience, you know, he is. And, uh, you know, with that comes a, a level of responsibility, and he's, he's cut out to do it. He's got the right mindset, right attitude, uh, and he's going to be, you know, he'll, he'll be a good leader for us. He, he really will. I mean, and uh, I'm excited about that.